Selsi, spoken easy language for social inclusion. Um, so hello everybody. Um, yeah, the purpose of my short presentation is self-promotion, I would say, in the sense that I'm going to promote what's what's been going on in this department and in particular at the SSLMIT which you can see written on, on the screen, which is the section of the department dealing with languages, translation and interpreting. So um, what I would like to tell you about today is uh, about two recent initiatives in the field of language simplification. Uh, but um, as Professor Magris uh, said earlier today during her introduction to, to today's um, event, uh, there are many researchers in this department who started working uh, on language simplification many years ago. The fact is that we discovered that we were working on similar themes only recently. So everybody was concentrating on their uh, language combinations and didn't know what the, other were, what the others were doing. Uh, but actually, we discovered that we were interested more or less in the same things, and therefore we started working together. Uh, now, um, I'm going to talk about two recent initiatives. What, what do I mean? Two publications, uh, which date back to December 2022. So we consider that pretty recent, considering the time something takes to get out. Yeah. Uh, the first one is uh, RIT. I'm sorry for uh, Slovenian native speakers, because with a single T, this is not a very nice word to say at a conference, but uh, this is what we call it. Uh, it stands for uh, Rivista Internazionale di Tecnica della Traduzione, or in English, International Journal of Translation. This is an open access journal. Uh, which means that it's a journal that you can uh, access freely without paying um, on the internet. And you can also see the link so everybody can download it for, for free. Uh, it is the journal of our um, section, so of our department. And in particular, um, Professor uh, Goran Karocco and myself co-edited number 24, December 2022 which was um, devoted, well, part of it was devoted to language simplification and interlingual translation. Am I speaking too fast? Am I speaking too fast? Probably, yes. Sorry. We are all speaking too <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, so in this uh, special part of the journal, we concentrated on various forms of language simplification, we call it also intralingual translation when the language simplification has to do with a single language. So when you transform a difficult text into a simpler text in the same language. But we also covered cases in which a difficult text in one language was transformed into a simpler text in another language. So where real translation, let's say, from one language into another language occurred. And uh, we managed to collect 10 articles from uh, various uh, authors, Professor Perigo included, um, and um, the languages covered by these articles were mainly four, Italian, English, German and Dutch. And the readers that we had in mind when we wrote these articles were experts. So these are um, contributions, articles meant for people who do research in this field. But uh, let me tell you that the proportion dedicated to spoken language is extremely small. So the main theme is still written texts. Um, I would like to give you some examples of the texts that were analyzed in these different contributions. So the first example that you can see on this slide uh, is taken in a text uh, from a text in um, Easy Dutch. Uh, and it was meant to share information on the correct behavior to prevent COVID-19 infection. 
And so you can see that very short sentences are combined with uh, icons, simple icons in a single color. And this is the way they transformed instructions that were given in a different way, in a more com a complicated way, in simple Dutch. Then we have two examples, one in English and one uh, in Italian from the a simplified version of the uh, Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities. Um, and again, you can see that there is a, a portion of text combined with visual elements of different kinds. Uh, this, again, the sentences are, uh, well, relatively short in, in the first case, shorter uh, when Italian is concerned, but still a combination of various elements. The third example on, on this slide is a poster um, which simplifies the Convention on the Rights of the Child for Children. So the target readers of this poster, this is the first page, it's actually made of two pages, are children. Uh, and children, um, I mean, means uh, minors so uh, underage uh, people and again you can see that you have a well you probably can see it's too small but uh, you have a combination of an icon uh, a very short text and in this case it's colorful because I presume this was a choice made due to the fact that children were the target users of this text so everything that you can see on this slide is written uh, and combined with visual elements. As for the spoken part, we have other examples. Uh, in the first case, museum audio description, uh, which, I mean, this can be a technical term. Uh, it means describing the content, what is shown in a museum for people who cannot see those things, those items. Um, but this is one thing. I mean, you can describe things in different ways. In the article that was um, published in this journal, uh, there is a, a thorough reflection on the role of easy language in museum audio description and the critical points of combining this type of description with easy language. In the second example on this uh, slide, uh, you see a screenshot of a video available on YouTube, um, which is in Leichte Sprache, uh, so in Easy German. And again, this has to do with museums uh, because it is a museum of um, natural sciences, which explains its content in easy language, but also combines this uh, so the oral part with subtitles, and this is done in German and in Italian. Um, and then the very last example on this slide has to do with, again, a difficult uh, technical term, augmentative and alternative communication. What does it mean? Well, this is a form of um, transforming a text uh, into a combination of words and icons, but in this specific case, every single word is accompanied by an icon. So even articles or auxiliary verbs in certain cases have an icon. Um, and this has been done, this technique has been used to transform um, the stories, uh, Gianni Rodari's stories for children uh, into a text that can be used by both children and adults with various cognitive disabilities and can enjoy a piece of literature in this way. So it's not informative, it's for entertaining purposes. Now moving on to the second, uh, to the second initiative, this is uh, a publication by Treccani. Treccani is a very famous uh, publishing house uh, in Italy, famous for its uh, encyclopedia mainly. Uh, but the website is extremely rich and it also has a magazine uh, and with special issues. Special, part of these magazines are devoted to the Italian language. 
and Professor Rondelli from this department uh, edited a special issue on simplified communication in Italian. Um, and um, actually in this special issue, six articles are collected, but this publication is different from the previous one. Why? Because all the articles concentrate on um, Italian only, and they are written in Italian because they are meant for Italian readers. And they are not meant for experts, but uh, the type of communication is between experts, those who wrote the articles, and non-experts uh, who may be interested in uh, linguistic issues. And in this case, um, we collected articles on uh, different varieties of Italian as well. So the Italian used in Switzerland, um, the Italian, um, well, Italian used in Alto Adige, and then um, Easy Language and Floriana uh, is going to tell us more about it. Um, and then uh, again, simplification for, for children, uh, the stories by Gianni Rodari, and uh, simplification in audiovisual translation, which means uh, simplification in the translation for, for instance, TV series, uh, films, documentaries, videos of various types. Am I right? Yeah, okay. Uh, and this simplification, again, is meant for people with disabilities of different kinds, mainly uh, cognitive and sensorial uh, disabilities. So these are the most recent initiatives that we carried out uh, in this department. We know that our main focus was not spoken language, but I presume that this can be uh, a good start to start working on that also from our part, those who are not directly involved in CELSI. Thank you very much. CELSI, spoken easy language for social inclusion. Partners are Zavo Trisa, RTV Slovenia, Dyslexi Verbundet, Universita degli Studi di Trieste, Vieglas Valodas Agentura, Vilnius Universitetas, Vsi Informatio Scaupimo Irsklaidos Centras. Funded by the European Union.